So I keep getting asked to give my opinion on the election results. Covering elections is not really my thing, but we'll go for it anyway. Almost everyone that I talk to seems either disappointed or outraged. Uh, I'm neither. And maybe that's just because I'm so cynical about politics in general, so I didn't expect some you know, grand red wave in which the Republicans took the House and the Senate. And even if we had taken the House and the Senate, I wouldn't expect that to result in meaningful change. So. Yeah, rather cynical, I admit, uh, but that has resulted in me being way less disappointed than almost everyone that I talk to. Um, I, I will say this much, though. When you look at the results as they're shown, being aware, I am very cognizant of the fact that we went from having an election day to an election season, and that that has its own ramifications, but all I can deal with is the data that we actually have. Okay, so ignoring but whatever implications you can read into the fact that we no longer have an election day. So a lot of them are hardline candidates won. And that's interesting. People actually showed up to vote for them. More moderate candidates had a more difficult time, by and large. Yes, I'm generalizing. But showing up to vote for Dr. Oz, if I were a voter in Pennsylvania, that would be a really hold-your-nose kind of affair. And when you have candidates like that, people aren't energized. They often simply don't show up to vote. We've seen that before. And you can argue that they should show up to vote anyway because they have to vote against the other guy and because in the grand scheme of things, we have to make sure that we have uh, the majority in the Senate or what have you. Yes, you can make all those arguments, but people don't show up to vote. And let's just deal with, with what the facts are. If we have bad candidates and we're fielding them, it will result in poor elections, even if everything's counted correctly. So that's something to bear in mind. Better uh, candidates, like Ted Bird, did well. The exception to that is when Mitch McConnell, of course, used his super PAC to abandon Blake Masters, which resulted in Masters not getting the, uh, the Senate seat over there in Arizona. And why he did that was particularly interesting, of course. He did that because uh, Masters had said that he would not support Mitch McConnell's bid for Senate leader, and because of that, he spitefully decided to sort of surrender that seat. And that's, I mean, it kind of shows what his priorities are and shows that he shouldn't be the Senate leader, as, as if we actually needed more confirmation of that. We have it now. So there you go. I do think that the pro-life messaging needs work because those on the left are successfully stating a... Or yeah, tr tr trying to state a moral high ground, pretending that they have it. And you saw that in a lot of their different ads, which I think were alarmingly effective. And it's, it's kind of crazy to think that those who are for the, you know, child murder are those who are, are, are gaining some kind of moral high ground in public perception. That's just kind of bewildering to the mind. But they're talking about these really extreme examples. You know, you, you, I'm sure if you watched any TV at all, you saw campaign commercials saying something like, you know, candidate X wants to ban abortion even for this 10 year old who'd been raped. I mean, they take these, these like ridiculous examples that are extreme and they talk about those instead of the abortions that happen for convenience, which is what most of them happen for every single day. And they don't talk about those. They don't talk about the actual, you know, human life implications that we're discussing. And okay, if you want to talk extreme examples, let's showcase the people who have survived their own abortions. Those people exist, but they're never given airtime by the leftist media and for, for good reason. And this whole thing of, uh, children born of rape ought to die? Why is that a moral high ground issue, really? What about those people who were born of rape and went on to live happy, healthy lives, who produced their own families? Um, who are these people who are claiming that those born of violent circumstances don't have value and dignity? I mean, the indignity in that argument is just immense. I think that we need to humanize the human beings that are being left behind in this rhetoric. And uh, the way that some people voted in regards to like the Born Alive Protection Act and some of the um, similar movements around the country was jarring. Those on the left are saying that there's no, there's no reason for this legislation. There's no reason for legislation that mandates that 
children who survived their abortions should get medical care, and yet they fight it tooth and nail while saying there's no reason for it. In fact, there is reason, and we, we have seen the fact that so many of these babies just simply get abandoned if they survive and left to die because, I guess, somebody paid for the abortion, so the baby has to die. It's shocking. Uh, the leftist media has been claiming that uh, this is sort of a referendum on Trump. I'm sure you've heard that. The Trump-backed candidates lost overwhelmingly. Well, some of them lost, a lot of them lost, and I don't think that has anything to do with the fact that Trump supported them. Uh, the candidates that Trump supported were often terrible. And honestly, this is one of his weak points. This, is, this has been one of his weakest points throughout his entire presidency, was that he didn't know who was decent and who wasn't. He didn't know who to surround himself with and who to avoid. So even if you like Trump's policies himself 100%, the people that he's telling you to vote for may not have the very same policies. Uh, we've seen that, so I wouldn't read too much into this being a Trump referendum. That's just absurd. Um, it's just what they want you to, uh, to hear. Regardless of all of that, I think that what matters is what mattered before, which is what's taking place in your local and state elections and communities. This is, this is a time to work locally on the things that you can actually get involved in. And we have seen in the past just year, uh, as I've been covering, the changes that have taken place in school systems and public libraries with regards to like trans story hour and just these books of like, frankly pedophilic nature that's been in the young adult section, stuff like that. What also matters is protecting election integrity, which is done more locally. So there are things that can be done. I wouldn't spend too much time being in distress over the, the national election with the problems that are there when you can fix what's happening in your local community, which have direct implications on you and your life that are a lot um, easier to influence than than the federal elections. So don't be entirely discouraged. Yes, the what goes on at the national level is always um, disappointing and is always frustrating and is full of just all kinds of sleazy people. But if you want to make change in politics and change in your local community, you can actually do that. And I think that's the start. Also, I do think there are some areas where we need to start changing our our messaging on various cultural ideas so that no longer are we just arguing against what the left wants and instead arguing um, in favor of what kind of society we ought to be heading toward. I mean, and when I was talking earlier about the different Republicans that are getting in power, I mean, what are they voting on now? They're, they're coming forth with some bipartisan bill about pushing gay marriage forth, because that's their priority at a time when children are being mutilated, those that survived the abortions, that is. Children in their teens are being mutilated um, because of leftist dogma, and instead the, the Republicans who are not conservatives because they're not conserving anything are focusing on pushing, pushing that bill through. It doesn't make any sense, and we can do better than this. You made it to the end. You either really liked or really hated that video. Let's assume you liked it. There are lots more that you can choose from, and also you can follow me on Gab and various other social media sites, and if you are able to support the channel, that's an option for you too. There are links in the description below. Thank you so much.